take a job as a high school teacher. And I really heard a voice really saying from the beginning that, because I'm hired as an English teacher, and a voice was saying, like, you're here to talk about love. And I was like, enormous fear coming up. Like, I knew I was going to face a lot of fear in that job. And um, like most of the students, uh, they, they are like very disillusioned with life on this planet. It seems to think that it's all pretty meaningless, which like I agree with them. And uh, I remember feeling that way also when I was in high school. And uh, I really want to reach out to them. And I perceive suffering, and not only there, but other places also, like other people in my life. I have this feeling that I'm like responsible, that I, I usually feel guilty if I'm like going through a day and I'm not connected to spirit. I feel guilty for not being able to help anybody because I wasn't connected. And but also like I, I, I read the course and Jesus tells me that okay you can be the voice for love in this world and I need you to like reach your brothers that are lost. And uh, um, so I'm just like okay so I'm perceiving people who are not happy and perhaps someone just in front of me like really displaying behavior like and I want to reach them and I don't know how to do it. And it's like how do I perceive that? Because like you said before, change your mind about the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I perceive the error. Yeah, it's like you're just at the beginning stages of like being used in miraculous ways. And I remember that one of, actually my last so-called job in the world was was as a teacher. I was teaching a psychology class at an art institute in downtown Cincinnati, and it was the it was the very 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 last job that I would have. And it was called, this place called Antonelli Institute. It was four-hour classes, and uh, I remember going into that, and it was very miraculous how I got the job too. You know, this woman pulled a, a resume uh, that I had written and sent in like years ago and it had dust on it and she just intuitively felt to reach over, pull the first one off of this stack of old resumes in this office, blew the dust off of it, called me up. I happened to had my parents uh, phone number on it, happened to be staying with them when she called. I said, who is this? And she said, can you come in for an interview to teach at Antonelli Institute? I went in there, I went through two interviews. She said, I love, I like your smile. I, da 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 da, you're hired. And so I got, that was the last job that I actually, you know, got a paycheck for kind of in a regular way or whatever. But, and then I was thinking like, I had a lot of fear coming up because I was like, it was four hour classes. And I got all this specific instruction about, I was not to have like, uh, a syllabus or or lesson plans actually it was uh, lesson plans and I mean I thought oh come on like a semester of teaching a four hour <laughs> class and no lesson plans it was just it's like oh it was really stretching me to the edge but I, I needed to be stretched to the edge and then I, I got the same thing you know you are love you will teach love you will teach forgiveness but you will not use any Christian terms that would be very inappropriate at an institute in downtown Cincinnati, you know, teaching a psychology class, you know, so no gods, no Holy Spirits, no Jesus, you know, none of that. And, and the very same thing happened. I got in there and, and mostly young people, like um, 17, 18 years old, some that were back with gray hair from continuing education, but majority, like 97 percent, just young people, disillusioned, fed up, angry, and all kinds of hairstyles and colors and rings in every part of the body that I'd never seen and so on and so forth. And, and it was great because I was kind of thrown out there, you know, like, like David in the lion's den. I was like thrown out there and the Spirit's like, You're gonna, I'm going to teach this class through you. So I felt like it was like a walk-in kind of a thing, you know, really, like I was supposed to go out there and teach a four-hour class, and the panic would set in, you know, I mean, at least if I could have had lesson plans, but the Holy Spirit would not let me even have lesson plans. Just going out there, wing it for four hours at a time, 
with the panic uh, of having these students' eyeballs looking at me after like 45 minutes or an hour and a half going, duh, you're the teacher, say something. And, uh, you know, I'd been so shy and quiet my whole life, and I thought, but what do you, you know, it was really kind of an intense um, christening, an intense baptism, an intense thing of like, let me do it through you. And I think I was there for maybe a couple semesters, but I got so intimate and so relaxed with them. And the man, the woman who hired me, she moved on to another job. And then the man who came in as the head of the institute, he never checked up on me. I was like in an incubator. I could let it rip. Week after week after week after week, nobody ever checked up on me. And I just got into this experience of starting to feel like it was all for me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, those were some of my fears, like I can't be talking about like this stuff every week for four hours in, in an academic setting, but it was almost like it was a total setup. Nobody checked up on me. We grew so close because it was so meaningful. Every one of those classes was so meaningful. We talked meaning of life things. There was one point in the semester where I had just had this realization that I had, you know, Jesus said in the, in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, judge not. And I just had this realization, I think it was during my second semester at some point, that I actually could not grade the students. I could not evaluate them. I'd actually transcended that, even though I was still in an academic setting and it was my responsibility to assign grades, I actually had had the, the realization that it was absolutely impossible for me to grade or evaluate them. So I was like, and now what? You know, you're teaching the class, what are you going to do? So I just showed up and I remember that day, you know, I came and I sat down, they're all sitting there, I said, you all have A's. And they were like, what? I said, you all have A's. We start, I've reached this realization in my mind, nobody's checking up on me, so I, where I cannot evaluate you, so I cannot grade you. So you all have A's. They're all, yeah, yeah, they're all really happy and everything. I said. And I said, but we seem to be in an academic setting here where grades need to be handed out and they expect that these will be based on the criteria. So I said, remember at the beginning, we had, you know, you have to do a paper, and you have to do this, and you have to do this, an exam, and so on and so forth. I said, you know, you're going to have to, you know, grade yourself, because I'm incapable of grading you. <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit handled that. I was off the hook. I, I was not going to grade them. And I knew that because I had transcended the, the possibility of grading them in my awareness. But I said, now, you're all going to grade yourself based on the criteria that was laid out at the beginning and this and this and this. And, I, and also when I gave them the final exam, it was all essay and it was all meaning of life. Like I had a whole stack of the deepest, most profound questions that the kind that I always would have wanted to have on an exam. Really practical, meaning of life questions, you know, really deep and profound. And then I would say pick, like out of whatever, 15, pick seven and answer them. And I said, and remember, just answer them from your heart because there are, are no right or wrong answers to these questions. So I took the pressure of right and wrong, took the pressure of grading off, and whoa, we, they were blue book kind of things. You, when I got these back, I cried reading the blue book exams because they, were, they poured their hearts out. It was the beginning of no people pleasing and no private thoughts. They poured their hearts out. They even wrote things like, I never told another living soul this, not even my parents. And they would write out their deepest, darkest secrets. I cried reading them. I'm sure they had huge healings uh, unveiling themselves. And this was all in, a, in, a, in an art institute. You see, the Holy Spirit took an art institute and me teaching psychology as just the backdrop for this tremendous thing to occur. And I didn't know at the time, I had no idea that I would be used to go to like 20, 29 countries and 
and do all the speaking. I was voted most quiet in my senior class. I, I was not, I was like a Moses candidate. You know, Moses stuttered and, and he has to deliver the Ten Commandments and I was voted most quiet and, and all these assignments in all these countries and this was preparation. This was just like clearing out the channel so that I could do my life's function starting off with a psychology class at an art institute, at a private art institute in downtown Cincinnati. And in two semesters, the, whole, the channel got so opened that I was like, okay. And what, what I heard after, after that, at the very end of that assignment, the man who, who was the head of the institute came into me and he said, I said, you know, I, I, I have to go on now. I have to move on. And he said, oh my God, we can't lose you as a teacher. I said, well, I, I really, I didn't say the Holy Spirit or anything spirit. I just said, I have to move on. I have to go on now. And he said, well, you'll have to find a replacement. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's odd. I, usually you don't have to find a replacement. But he said very matter-of-factly to me, he said, you have to find a replacement. So I had my friend, I was into A Course in Miracles, my friend Don Tallheimer was, we had gone to these uh, transpersonal psychology um, colleges to try to go, in, go for a degree in transpersonal psychology. I took the route of coming back to Cincinnati and getting this miraculous job from the Holy Spirit and he took the route of going to that and, and when I, I was like, what am I going to do? And then I thought of him, the Holy Spirit said, call Don. I called him up. He just graduated with a master's degree in transpersonal psychology and needed a job. I said, have I got a job for you? <laughs> it's a setup. He came back. He waltzed right in. The Holy Spirit even took bringing in my replacement, you know, and it was so beautiful. And then as I went on, you know, all those skills and abilities are that were used in that way got used in broader, broader ways. And I remember Jesus saying to me, that was your last regular job that you'll have in this lifetime. And, and he said, now you're mine. And I will use you in ways that you cannot even conceive of. Talk about no plan. I will use you in ways you cannot conceive of. And believe me, at that stage, I would not have conceived of, of you know, all these round-the-world trips and speaking to all these different people in all these different countries and everything. I had no clue what was coming. But I could feel the miracle of, of him using that simple psychology class and that four-hour class in that institute. And, and that was my preparation. That was kind of like, instead of going to Jesus University or, you know, whatever, it was, that was it. It was compressed really into two semesters and it, it just worked so well so you're just right on and it is a little scary because it's you're stepping into the unknown you know you've got a whole life's mission that's ready to unfold and you're just getting the part of you're going to teach love <laughs> in an English class you know and then okay show me the way you know give me what's next what do I do you know and it's a great adventure it's not like a uh, right mind way to proceed. It's like, this is all for me. Yes. Always come back to that. Yes. This is all for me. Yes. The fear comes in when you start to think about them. But in the, it's all for me because there's only one. It's all for everyone. Yeah. It really is. It's funny, you know, I don't think about these things anymore, but listening to you talk, David, I, I, uh, I'm reminded that one thing that um, Michael Beckwith would say to the ministerial candidates is he would say, God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called and all are called. <laughs>